So we've had all the fun on the water down at Hins Dam with that deeper unit, and now it's time to assess some of the bank fishing capabilities of this uh, Deeper Pro Plus. Remember, there are two of the Deeper Pro units. The Pro unit itself is the one with the faster ping rate and the Wi-Fi connections, but this one has the faster ping rate, the Wi-Fi connections, and it also has an inbuilt GPS. And I've got uh, some assistance to do this. I've got Tim Morgan here from Rapala, VMC Australia. And Tim, you're the distributor of this unit here, and uh, we're at one of your little local lakes down here at Rochdale to see this thing in action. Uh, um, just take us through through, if I've got a deeper unit and I want to set it up from the bank, not the boat, what sort of settings do I need to change? Well, firstly, you need the Pro Plus with the inbuilt GPS. Yes, it has so, to be the Plus. So the Pro Plus will allow you to map this lake from the bank here. So you don't have to go out in the canoe, the kayak, the boat. You can do it all from the bank. So basically, the main difference in the unit here is if you go into the onto the screen here and hit settings, and you scroll down and run. Um, sonar mode so you hit on sonar mode there you can actually see standard mode ice fishing mode not not very valid for australia boat mode and onshore gps mode so we hit the onshore gps mode go back back again and then you can see it splits the screen so the onshore gps mode will give us the gps screen at the lake here and then also on the other side of the screen it'll give you the depth and show if there's any fish there or not now looking at this unit here it says that this gps isn't connected at the moment that's because this deep is not on when the deeper actually turns on these two uh, connections here they have to be connected by water for this yep. unit to turn on so that's how it manages the battery in this unit also if you look at this unit there are uh, there are several different attachment points this top attachment point is for when you're putting your uh, your boat holding arm onto yep. it to hold it. This one here is for when you're using it from high above the water like on a pier and this low unit here is for when you're casting a retriever. So we've got this thing tied on today to the low unit and let's just um, let's just pull this apart and have a look at the moment uh, of the internals of this unit. So when you charge this unit there's a little USB that you can plug into your phone charger, the back of your computer um, and that will charge the unit. This little light goes from red to green when it's charged. The other tip is there are some things here see those uh, those tabs on there they need to match each other uh, to make sure that this unit is waterproof you need to get that all the way around and then bang this unit's waterproof and that's ready to go so Timmy that's um let's cast that out get the connection going um, get that GPS working and then see some of this uh, this mapping stuff in action Timmy's got a very undergunned rod there and he bombs that uh, <laughs> transducer out and uh, if you come in close and have a look here um, this now uh, yes. So you see, this has gone green. The uh, the GPS signal, and now the GPS is located on there. So if you start winding that thing in there, Timmy, um, you'll see that this thing starts uh, mapping the bottom of the lake. And what we want to do is our aim for this is to create a uh, a full bathymetric map of um, of this lake here in Rochdale at Underwood Park. Um, probably will take us 50 or 60 casts. <laughs> Um, but then you can see the, um, this map can be recorded, you can take it back, you can, uh, you can study it, you can overlay it on the things. It's, uh, it's creating that digital map on a waterway where you may not be able to get out on the water. Of course, the only way you can find out how deep it is no normally is to either you know, hit the bottom with a crankbait, you know, snag up on the bottom, or have a lake which is so clear that you can actually see how deep it is. So uh, we're making this uh, map as we go through. You can see that uh, getting shallower and shallower. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to make a lot of casts. We're going to try and map this whole lake. We're going to come back to you at the end and show you exactly how we can create your very own homemade bathymetric maps with that deeper unit. So we're just moving up the lake a little bit. We've uh, stood on one little pontoon and mapped that half of the lake. So we're coming down the little walkway here and try and map the other half of the lake so we can find out where the deeper holes are and where the fish are actually sitting. Okay, so we've, uh, we've probably spent the last, I reckon, about an hour, yep. I suppose, mucking around on the water and creating maps. And, and to make the process simpler, we, um, we actually did it with two different outfits. We mm. both had the Deeper Pro Plus with the GPS. Um, I rigged mine on a big swim bait rod, and I was by far the furthest caster with that thing. <laughs> uh, on a light spin rod, it doesn't throw as far. You can probably mm. throw halfway. You're more lobbing. Lake. You're more lobbing, mm. whereas this thing, you're powering it. A um, couple of myths I can dispel. Yes, you can get them snagged. I could have snagged in a tree over there, but with the brute force of that uh, swim bait rod, I managed to pull it out. Um, 
A few tips, I suppose, for that, that I didn't realise coming out of the box is um, these things don't map anything which is under three feet deep. Yep. So a lot of this lake here is um, is that two to three feet deep. You can mm. see the bottom; it won't map that. Yep. So the map we managed to create was anything that was three feet deep and deeper. But I think that the creation of the map was pretty cool. You can see that there's no real old water course running through this thing. There's a vague sort of channel, mm. and that matches with the swampy sort of country, yep. which is which is upstream of there. Um, the other things that I noticed are you can have a disconnection between your phone and the deeper, but that is less if you have this actually attached to the rod or up on your body. If you put this down behind a tree or down in a low place, it's going to um, it's going to disconnect a little bit easier. Most of the time, it reconnects pretty quickly, um, and you can get on with the with the job. The other thing is every time you throw, you need to wait till that GPS the little signal goes green because it sort of tends to disconnect with the GPS when that thing lands and goes underwater. Yep. Pops back up, normally takes a few seconds, it's on, and then you can do your winding in and do your mapping. Yep, and as you're winding it in, you actually see it draw on the map, which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool, and you know, I had some areas which I thought were a bit dodgy, I cast over them again, and it will redraw those lines when it, as it gets the most accurate picture. So for me, the DP units are, you know, if you're just a bank fisherman fishing one spot all your life, may not be worth doing because you're only fishing one spot, you probably know that spot, but if you go to a lot of different spots, and if you fish in a kayak or a small boat, and if you only want to, to buy one um, sub five hundred dollar mm. unit, and you have a smartphone. I think it's a pretty it's a pretty good cheap way to get your own mapping, all the uh, all the smart things that this can do for under five hundred bucks. So, uh, Timmy, what's your your impressions of it? No, oh, I love it. And it's, like I said, if you go to a lot of different places, the, the surface of the water there looks all flat. But if you can find the drop offs, the weed beds, where the fish are actually holding, you can target your lures or your baits to that spot and obviously catch more fish. So. You know, I'll definitely, every time I go out in the canoe or kayak bass fishing, um, up the rivers for jacks and stuff like that, I'll always have one of these in, in the canoe or kayak. Um, I think the other interesting thing is when we were doing all of the mapping, of course, you get to see the places where the fish were, and it's uh, no surprise in this little uh, Underwood Park Lake that all of the fish that I found were hanging over there where they were uh, feeding the ducks. <laughs> you know, I think the pecking order goes ducks, turtles, and then all of the tilapia, and there's actually a few Australian bass in here as well. Um, Look, we're gonna. Uh, my, I suppose my net time with these now is probably four or five hours playing with them. They are a pretty cool piece of technology. Mm. And Timmy, where can you go if you want more information about the the deeper units? About the deeper units themselves, you go to buydeeper.com, and that'll uh, that'll put you in, give you all the information you need, as well as you know, put you to the shops where you can actually purchase one. There you go. So uh, I don't like reading instructions. I got most of the way through running this thing without reading the instructions, but definitely uh, the online instructions which are here are pretty cool and help me get through any uh, any of the things that I got stuck with and. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think you're going to get this one back. I might keep it. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> uh, of course, any more information on uh, on new tackle, uh, especially stuff for the upcoming after show, is uh, tacklejunkie.fish online and uh, like us on Facebook.